the national championship game could come down to the punters seriously, 2018. Atlanta Even though it appears the embrace started from the other direction, Alabama punter J.K. Scott insists he initiated the hug. The timing of this photo that spread around the internet like wildfire gives the impression that Crimson Tide coach Nick Saban grabbed Scott on his graduation day and said something to the tune of please don't go. That might have made for a better story, but it isn't true. While Saban probably does feel that way about the lanky specialist from Denver who has been one of Alabama's best players from the moment he set foot on campus, no, really, it was Scott who wanted to show his appreciation to a coach who appreciates the hidden yards a great punter can squirrel away for his team. Nobody hugs Coach Saban, Scott said. I just hugged him. I'm a big hugger. Either Scott or his Georgia counterpart Cameron Dezela could get a bear hug from his coach following Monday's national title game. The Bulldogs' defense allows 4.7 yards a play, number 8 in the nation. The Tide's defense allows 3.9 yards a play. That's the best in the country. Yards will come at a premium, and the punter who has the best night might wind up the national title game's most valuable player. Or he might be the player who most deserves to win the MVP, which probably will wind up going to a quarterback. It may seem odd to write a national title game preview about the punters, but this story is critical for two reasons. First, these teams might not have made it to Atlanta without these punters. Second, this column is called Punt, Pass and Pork. It has existed for four seasons. It has featured plenty of words about passing and about pork. But until today, it never had focused on punting. Plus, Dzielek and Scott have had fascinating years. In December 2016, Dzielek graduated from Columbia with an economics degree. Dzielek had spent three and a half years on campus and been part of four football teams. But he hadn't seen the field his freshman season. According to the NCAA, he could play one more year. But the Ivy League doesn't allow redshirting, so if Nazielek wanted to take advantage of that final year, he'd have to do it elsewhere. The son of two Duke graduates, Dzielek hadn't concentrated on football prestige when choosing which college he would attend after he graduated from Freedom High in Woodbridge, Vet. Out of high school, my focus was to get the best degree I could, he said. I never focused on playing big or playing at the next level. I never thought I could play at the NFL. As I developed my career, I thought that might be a possibility. Mazielek averaged 42.9 yards a kick and boomed 10 punts of 50 or more yards as a Columbia sophomore in 2015. He averaged 44.8 yards a kick and booted 950 or more yards in 16. Suddenly, the next level seemed possible. So Nazielek began looking for another school. He considered Georgia, Clemson, South Carolina and Virginia Tech, but of those schools, the Bulldogs probably needed him the most. Marshall Long started at punter for Georgia in 2016, but he broke his kneecap during a practice before the Auburn game that season. 
that forced backup quarterback Bryce Ramsey into the job. Ramsey averaged 34.7 yards on 20 punts, and it forced the Bulldogs into an awkward situation. Long's injury required surgery, and he wouldn't be cleared for live action by spring practice. The arrival of freshman quarterback Jake Fromm meant Ramsey, who was set to graduate in May, was a threat to transfer. Ramsey did decide to transfer in March but changed his mind in June and remained on the team, so Nazilek joined the Bulldogs as a walk-on graduate student. He won the starting job and averaged 44.9 yards a kick this season. He also earned a master's degree in sport management. Georgia special teams coordinator Shane Beamer teases Nazilek when the Bulldogs play in a packed stadium. Hey bud, Beamer will say, this is a long way from Columbia versus Yale. Long in several ways. The Lions went 5-25 in the three seasons Nazilek played. Georgia had matched the twin total by September 30th. Still, the change in stakes hasn't bothered Nazielak. He doubts he'll be nervous for the national title game. He's already punted once in Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the SEC Championship game win against Auburn so he knows the sidelines. You have to treat it like every other game, he said. Scott also has punted in the national title game venue. The Tide opened their season there with a win against Florida State. That was the game Scott debuted a new punting style that he hoped would gain Alabama more of those hidden yards. By the end of his junior season, Scott already had put together a stellar career at Alabama. He was a finalist for the Ray Guy Award as a freshman in 2014, and he had averaged 46.3 yards a kick over three seasons with 73 punts of 50 yards or more. Bothered Scott that opponents had returned 20 of his punts for a total of 213 yards. To him, the net mattered more than the gross and the opponent's starting field position mattered most. So Scott worked all off-season to raise his drop point where he drops the football before kicking so he could get more hang time. This forced him to sacrifice distance, about four yards a kick, but it achieved the desired effect. Only four Scott punts have been returned this season. The total yardage on those returns? Five. Meanwhile, 25 of Scott's 48 punts have pinned opponents inside the 20-yard line. 15 of those have pinned opponents inside the 10. Scott's improvement and the way his new style can affect a game was most evident in Alabama's 24-10 win against LSU on November. Chark had sunk Auburn with a punt return for a touchdown a few weeks earlier, but trying to catch Scott's soaring punts discombobulated the receiver. Chark fair caught punts on the 9, 6 and 7 yard lines. Catching one nearly knocked him down. Chark told the, Baton Rouge, law, advocate that Scott had changed his strategy from distance to hang time mid-game. Had to adjust on the fly, Chark told the paper after the game. Never seen a guy punt the ball as high as he did. When they do it on the fly, like an in-game adjustment, it was, something we haven't seen. Saban also praised Scott afterward. 
I think he changed the field position three or four times, which was critical in the game, Saban told reporters. This was probably, Scott's, best game all year long in terms of not only the distance but the hang time because they were doubling the gunners. They were taking our gunners out. The gunners are usually the guys making the plays. With Scott punting, the kick itself usually can make the play by forcing a fair catch or by forcing the return man to abandon the idea of catching the ball at all and letting it drop. That's why he is the secret weapon for America's top defense. And it's probably why Saban looked so happy hugging him. It's been a while since Ivory ranked a music chart. Today, I'll choose the top 10 songs of this week from 30 years ago using the weekly top 40 from January. Just like heaven, the cure 3. The way you make me feel, Michael Jackson 5. In God's Country, U27. So emotional, Whitney Houston 8. Is this love? White Snake 9. I've had, the time of my life, Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes 10. Don't shed a tear, Paul Carrick. Saban seemed fairly bored with most of the questions he received Saturday at Media Day for the national title game with one exception. A reporter asked Saban about his favorite bands, and suddenly he became quite animated. Here is his answer in all its glory. Well, I have four favorites on a DVD in my car, alright, Michael Jackson, The Rolling Stones, The Eagles and Delton John. Now, for all you young and see, one good thing about my age is we grew up in a pop culture that no one else will ever have the opportunity to live through, from Elvis Presley all the way through hard rock. Motown, all the way through, soft rock, all that. So I lived all that, so I enjoy all that. And even though my son is 31 years old, he plays guitar, he plays all the stuff from when I was going to college. So that's just proof in the pudding to me that they don't make them like they used to. So I have boat jam, when I go on my boat in the summertime, and we have music is important, I mean, to me. I love listening to music. Do I listen to music when I work? Not really. But it does create a little bit of a different kind of mindset sometimes, a little bit of a pick-me-up, which I appreciate. If. Like me, you've seen the Saban electric slide video, you probably also consider it definitive proof that his favorite Michael Jackson song is Rock With You. UCF will hold a parade Monday at Walt Disney World to celebrate the national title it is claiming after going 13-0. The coaches playing in the actual national title game aren't concerned. I'm fine with it. Doesn't mean anything to anybody but them, Saban said. They should be proud of the season they had. I know how hard it is. We've only had one undefeated season, I think, in all the time I've been around. It's a difficult accomplishment. I think when players accomplish that, they should feel good about what they've accomplished. Said Kirby Smart, to be honest with you, I don't think about it. I'm thinking about Alabama. If I was at UCF, it'd probably do the same thing.
When your team wins the Rose Bowl in double overtime and earns the chance to play for its first national title since 1980, you celebrate. Here is round 20 with my Georgia neighbor after Rose Bowl win. Pick. Twitter. Com slash 4Y by Lewis Mary Ramsayer, at Mary Ramsayer, January 2, 2018. Colleague and Fox Sports television reporter Bruce Feldman joined the podcast to preview the national championship game and to discuss the dessert item I'll be reviewing two sections south of here. After Monday, there won't be another college football game until August set your frowns accordingly. We walked into the stall in Atlanta's Bond City Market expecting a gelato shop, because that's what the sign out front advertised. At first glance, the place looked like one. A long rectangular cooler with glass walls held buckets containing different flavors. Scoops stood ready nearby. The menu board advertised a price for cups containing one, two or three scoops. But upon closer inspection, the substance in the buckets looked slightly different. It was refrigerated but not frozen. It seemed a little more textured than ice cream or gelato even though the flavors chocolate chip, salted caramel, peppermint. Brownie all seem to match. This is gelato? I asked to no one in particular. No, the man working the counter said. The gelato is behind you. I turned to see a nearly identical cooler that absolutely contained gelato. I turned back and looked at the first counter's menu board again. The wheels turned inside my brain until I arrived at the awful, beautiful truth. So this is all and cookie dough? We had found batter, Atlanta's home for cookie dough in a cup. After sharing this discovery on Twitter, readers informed me that similar concepts have popped up in Chicago and New York. Apparently, the lines can stretch for hours in New York. They are not long at batter, but they should be. The idea of selling raw cookie dough in large quantities simultaneously makes sense and feels completely wrong. Everyone wants to lick the spoon between the mixing of the batter and the placing of the cookies in the oven. So why not give the people their favorite part of the cookie baking process in a giant mound in a cup? Still, a bite of raw cookie dough contains so much concentrated pleasure that an entire cup of it seems dangerous. Think of it this way, everyone loves an orgasm, but 10 orgasms in 5 minutes might kill a person. A scoop of cookie dough feels like the culinary equivalent of that feat. To answer the obvious question, there is no raw egg in batter's batter. It also uses heat-treated flour, so there is no need to worry about contamination. Despite the lack of eggs, the dough feels and tastes exactly like what you'd make at home. I ordered a cup of peppermint cookie dough with M and M's on top. My companions split between salted caramel and chocolate chip. Everyone moaned at first bite. The dough is always better than the cookie itself, and now we had entire cups of dough. We vacillated between this is amazing and this is a thing that should not exist. But we all ultimately return to the former. A cup of cookie dough, it turns out, is exactly as amazing as you'd imagine.
The menu offers the choice of one, two or three scoops. I say this as someone who has once eaten a three pound hamburger and twice eaten a 64 ounce ribeye. eye, there is no way one person should consume more than one scoop in a single sitting. Your stomach can't hold it, and your brain's pleasure centers aren't prepared to handle the workload. But if you batter responsibly, you'll ascend to a new level of dessert decadence.